Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Government fires back at criticisms of SOE declaration. Mixed reactions to announcement of billion-dollar renovation plans for Ultra Race Market. And later in sports, Manning Cup finalists to be decided today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kerry Ann Simpson, and here are the details. The government has fired back at criticisms and concerns voiced after yesterday's declaration of states of emergency SOE. Information Minister Robert Morgan insists the comments are not justified and that the SOEs have worked. Romardo Lyons reports. It was a long list of issues from the executive director of Jamaicans for Justice, Michael Jackson, in response to the reimposition of the state of public emergency in St. James and new impositions in Hanover, Clarendon and St. Catherine. Chief among them was the suggestion that the government circumvented the constitution by reimposing a state of public emergency in St. James yesterday without consulting the opposition. However, Information Minister Robert Morgan has fired back, not only defending the move, but also the decision not to consult the opposition on the matter. Everybody knows what the opposition's position is. The opposition has never, since Mark Golding has become leader of the opposition, it has never been a partner with the government in the fight against crime. Every single action the government has taken to aid in the fight against crime, the opposition has been against. Now, the point I'm making to you, the opposition has gone to court seeking a declaration that SOEs um, are unconstitutional. They have been on your program on numerous occasions saying that they will never support it. What would be the point of wasting the people's time to have discussions about something that somebody consistently says they do not want to speak about? Mr. Morgan says the new declarations are different from the first. He argues that combining St. James with Hanover and Clarendon with St. Catherine is based on a different assessment from what triggered the first SOE. He suggests that the SOEs have been yielding success, and so the continued use is justified. Last year when we declared the SOEs in similar areas, we saw almost a 40% reduction in, in murders coming over into January. And based on that start, the police had an opportunity to maintain what is now a 10% reduction in murder. That is something to celebrate. That is success. It may not be, it may not be um, a full success, and any life lost is, is a concern to the government, but a reduction in murder is a, is a reduction in murder. Mr. Morgan was speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106 FM this morning. Romarda Lyons, TVJ News. Prescriptive rights for family and mental health psychiatric nurse practitioners are expected to take effect mid-2024. That's according to former president of the Nurses Association of Jamaica, Patsy Edwards-Henry. We should be working by mid, hopefully by mid next year, because a lot of the work that needed to have been done on the legislation to amend the act, both the midwifery, nursing and midwifery, and the pharmacy council act, that work has already started. So it shouldn't take long. We haven't really pinned him down to a timeline. So it's something that we are looking forward to, to be implemented no later than mid next year. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton announced in the House of Representatives on Tuesday that Cabinet has approved the issuance of drafting instructions to the Chief Parliamentary Council to amend the Nurses and Midwives Act and the Pharmacy Act. This is to allow for the licensing of advanced practice registered nurses. Since the start of the year, the parish of Portland has recorded some nine road collisions. This has resulted in 10 deaths. Head of Operations Inspector Harris Harris says this is compared to six collisions and six deaths last year this time. Therefore, he has this warning. We're seeing where we're having an increase in the deaths on the road. So that's, that's one of the reasons why we are encouraging persons going into the Yuletide season to, to be very careful if you if you if you know you're a heavy drinker, have a designated driver. Don't don't go around the wheel any at all. And if you're a pedestrian, you pay attention to the roadway. You know, when you're crossing, you know, um, use the roadways properly. Um, if you 
if you're 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 a heavy drinker as a pedestrian, have somebody walking with you also, so that you 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 they can help you to keep straight, right? Because you might just walk into the path of a motorist, and that can be dangerous. And the Portland police say the parish has recorded an increase in murders compared with the similar period last year. Head of Operations Inspector Horace Harris says 14 homicides were recorded since the start of the year compared with 11 for the corresponding period last year. We have gone over our 2022 figure by three, and that is three too many. So as part of the operations team, we want to ensure that we keep this figure at 14. We, we do not want to have anyone else being killed in this division for the rest of the year. And we are encouraging you, our partners and citizens, to assist us wherever you can. He says eight firearms were seized compared to five last year. They also recovered some 81 assorted ammunitions since the start of operations this year. team. Operations meaning all the division. I don't, it's not a, just a section. We managed to arrest a total of 2,897 persons in for this year in comparison to 2,522 last year. So. With that in mind, I think the team, the entire team, deserve a, a, a round of applause because this has shown this has shown a significant increase over last year. There are mixed reactions to the announcement made by Prime Minister Andrew Holness that one billion dollars. Uh, $1 billion would be set aside to refurbish the Ocherius market. Now, while some have welcomed the move, others say they are watching and waiting. Kalisha Williams reports. Mayor of St. Anne's Bay, Sydney Stewart, has described the announcement made by Prime Minister Andrew Holness to inject $1 billion into the renovation of the Ocherius market as long overdue. He says following talks, work is expected to begin soon. $1 billion to do not just expansion, but to, to do a complete uh, construction of a new and modern market is very, very welcome. Not, not by, just by us in the municipality, but the entire parish of St. Anne. For chairman of the St. Anne Chamber of Commerce, Ransford Davidson, the announcement aligns with the growth and development trajectory of the parish. This is critical for sustainable tourism development that we continue to re-emphasize and will also reduce some of the existential challenges we're having with respect to street and illegal um, vending activities in certain spaces in our township, as well as result in congestions and overcrowding caused from these um, activities. But some vendors and business operators have concerns. Most of the on the street, they have their shop and their stall in the market. So I prefer the people to come in the market first before the market even start to work on. If they will really keep their word, then I approve 100%. But sometimes they make promises that they don't keep because we have heard of the market being fixed before about five or seven years ago and that's been done so i take their word with a pinch of salt a plenty billion dollar um um grand feeder market i mean i see no improvement plenty money grand fee i mean i see no improvement i'm there for me a nine year old i'm a 70 year old now with mixed feelings about the announcement, it's left to be seen how the renovation plans will progress. Kalisha Williams, TVG News. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Plans are underway to further enhance the infrastructure at police stations across the island to improve the security force's efficiency.
Under Project ROC, the Ministry of National Security, in partnership with the National Housing Trust and the Social Investment Fund, has constructed and renovated five police facilities. But for the 2024-2025 fiscal year, the ministry plans to ramp up these efforts with a five million, rather with a five hundred million dollar project. The Ministry of National Security is committed to further ramping up the efforts in the fiscal year 2024 to 2025. We aim to undertake another 25 major renovations and repair projects amounting to approximately $500 million. Time now for the Business Minute. Jamaica recorded 3.2% growth in the manufacturing industry for the quarter ended September 2023. Director General of the Planning Institute of Jamaica, Dr. Wayne Henry, says this was attributable to increased output in the food, beverages, and tobacco and other manufacturing sub-industries. Growth in the other manufacturing sub-industry was mainly due to higher production in the petroleum products category. On the international scene, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration recalled cinnamon applesauce pouches after reports of high blood lead levels in children. As of Wednesday, there have been 52 reports of illness among children under age 4 in 25 states. Dollar Tree says it's working with the FDA on clearing all of the products from their shelves. The company also says it has locked its registers to block any sales of the items items in question. The FDA is also now screening shipments of cinnamon from multiple countries for possible lead contamination. And that's the end of the Business Minute. I'm Raquel Porter. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the European Union is providing £19 million to enhance the resilience and sustainability of food systems in the Caribbean, promoting food and nutrition security, particularly for groups in vulnerable situations. This is part of the EU's larger £600 million effort to step up support to the most vulnerable African, Caribbean and Pacific countries hit by the global food crisis. Under this food security program, the EU and CARE Forum will work hand in hand with their respective national partners to target some of the most pressing bottlenecks to achieve a sustainable solution to food and nutrition security in the Caribbean. On the international scene, hospitals in Beijing and northern China are seeing a surge in respiratory illnesses amongst children. This just a year after the country relaxed stringent COVID-19 controls. This has resulted in hundreds of patients queued at some children's hospitals in major cities across northern China for several hours. An official report says the current average of more than 7,000 daily patients far exceeds the hospital's capacity. The largest pediatric hospital in nearby Tianjin broke a record on Saturday, receiving more than 13,000 children at its outpatient and emergency departments. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Kelisha Williams. Thanks, Kelisha. We now head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports with Jordan Ford.